So here we are back in the barn. I took that off so that I could uh, take this apart and do that. Let's go ahead and um, put this back in the case because I think at this point it'll be easier to work with once with it already in place. All right, unfortunately, before I begin, I see a problem I'm going to have. I have plenty of wire for the yellow and black to reach where I want to put the module, but as you can see, the red is stretching over these heat sinks, and it's just not going to work. I have no choice but to pull this out and lengthen it, so let's go ahead and get that done. Just got to undo this circuit board again. Okay. And just solder it back in, and now we should have plenty of wire to spare. And of course, it's a little too thick here to get through my little tiny hole. Just kind of smooth that out. I think it'll go right in. There. Nope. There we go. And so that we got to nip those wires off too. So now what I need to do is cut a hole in here to fit this in. And looks like what I want to do, it'd be really nice, can I squeeze that in? If I cut this thing down, I think I can squeeze it right in the middle there, right where I want it. So I'm going to have to cut some of this plastic off to make that work. So here's some use these nippers to cut it away. Now I've got one problem here I've got to watch out for. Right there you can see the current shunt. Let's get this out of the way. That little piece of metal is the current shunt. This is used for measuring the current so I don't want that touching anything. I may have to put some insulation on it. But let's get these tabs off. By golly I think that'll work. It's going to be a tight tight fit. That would be the perfect spot right there if I can make it work. This would be my ideal, so let's tape it in place. Hmm. Okay. I do believe that'll work. It's not quite going together, but that's not... Yes, I can make that fit. So that's where it's going to go, right there. How much overlap does that bezel have? Only about a sixteenth of an inch. So what I want to do is make some marks. Just going to do it by eyeball. I'll use a piece of duct tape for a straight edge here. There's that edge. And we have what's called a nibbling tool. I've had this for a million years. It's got a just got a nick in it, but it still seems to cut just fine. So what I do, uh-oh, I have a problem here. It's too thick for the nibbling tool. Too thick for the nibbling tool, I think. 
Yes, it is. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's well, maybe it just maybe it's just barely. This does it takes a little bite at a time. You can see it's taking little square bites, but it's this plastic's a lot thicker than the nibbling tool is designed for. I certainly could not cut metal this thick with it. You can cut thin steel with this nibbling tool. Yes, I'm actually you can see I'm actually making some cuts here. One more cut and I'll be up to my line. There's be two more cuts. Try to angle this toward the camera while I cut. Well, it looks like what I'll be doing is using a combination of my nibbling tool and this little little tiny hand hacksaw, which makes quick work of the plastic. I just have to be able to get it in there. So you can see it cuts pretty quickly there. So I'm going to use the nibbling tool to make room for the hacksaw blade. Okay, that's going to do a nice job. Okay, I've gotten right up that line. I don't want to cut any closer. Okay, there is a rude, crude hole in this thing. Now, will this fit in yet? Probably not. Okay, it needs to be cleaned up a lot. Wanted to go in fairly. There we go. Perfect fit. Now, there it is. Uh, I kind of mangled it a little bit here and there, but certainly good enough. Okay, so still need to put my other two screws in there, but that'll only take a second. So it ain't perfect. I made that hole maybe just a little too big. Got a that's nothing. I got a little tear in the thing, but hey, it doesn't look half bad. Let's take it out and give it a try. Well, the lighting is not nearly as good as it was yesterday, but let's put this where we can see it here. And as soon as I hook it up to the battery, we should have an indication. There it is, 12.6 volts. That sounds about right. Now, if we if we put it on, if we start the charge, press the button, listen for the click. There it goes, 1.578. Current is going up. Two amps. To 13.2, three amps, 13.3. .3.
And as we can see, the voltage and current are slowly going up, 13.9, 14 volts. And there we go, 14.8. Uh, that's a little high, but I guess it'll come back down when it needs to. So there we have it, 4.8 amps. And it's now dropping in voltage, I think. So now we have our volt and current on our charger. And I mangled the label a little bit, but you can hardly tell. So there we have it. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.